Alexander Kovalenko, a Ukrainian military expert, believes that terrorizing the civilian population is a part of Russia's warfare strategy. He shared this opinion on his Telegram channel. Terrorizing the civilian population is a normal state of affairs in Russia, Kovalenko stated. He noted that recently, Russian forces have conducted a series of strikes targeting exclusively civilian objects in Ukraine. These attacks began with Kharkiv, including the use of 9M723 ballistic missiles, and continued with strikes on Sumy, where a center for social and psychological rehabilitation of children was destroyed, followed by strikes on Kyiv. Not a single military facility was hit, only civilian targets. Particularly noteworthy is the strike on the Sumi Center for Social and Psychological Rehabilitation of Children. How sick and depraved do you have to be to target such an institution? A decision-making center, he added. According to Kovalenko, the use of terror against civilians has long been a part of Russia's warfare strategy. He drew parallels to the Soviet Union's tactics, stating that terrorizing the civilian population was a tactical and strategic element of Soviet warfare. This involved the targeted destruction of civilian infrastructure and the killing of civilians to spread panic and create chaos, applying moral and psychological pressure on authorities to compel early surrender. This concept included elements of war crimes which could well be classified as genocide. Kovalenko noted, he cited historical examples including the Soviet Union's Afghan campaign from 1979 to 1989, where estimates of civilian casualties range from 700,000 to 2 million. During the Chechen Wars, civilian casualties were similarly high, with estimates ranging from 400,000 to 120,000 in the First Chechen War and 50,000 to 200,000 in the Second Chechen War. Kovalenko also referenced the five-day war in Georgia and the Russian campaign in Syria, both marked by attacks on civilian targets such as schools, hospitals and residential neighborhoods. The strikes on Ukrainian border towns and villages are not acts of revenge, but are driven by a strict, systematic pragmatism dictated by a broader concept of warfare, he explained. Kovalenko argued that modern Russia's approach remains consistent with historical patterns of violence and terror aimed at intimidating and disrupting civilian populations in occupied territories. Modern Russia is no different from the USSR in its approach. Kovalenko concluded, emphasizing that the terrorizing of civilian populations continues to be an integral part of Russia's strategy. Strikes on Russian territory with storm shadow missiles without the accompanying use of American weapons could be ineffective, writes The Telegraph. The UK and France can authorize storm shadow strikes on Russian territory as much as they like, but unless the US authorizes the use of its HAM and MALD missiles, the Ukrainians will likely simply be wasting valuable weapons, the publication says. It is noted that the Storm Shadow missile itself has limited use. Basically, Scalp Stroke Storm Shadow is a small, subsonic robotic jet. In the 1980s, this was considered a complicated thing, but shooting down a subsonic jet is far from impossible. And that's why Scalp Stroke Storm Shadow isn't very useful on its own. Without some help, it would likely be shot down by Russian air defenses before it could reach its target. It is worth recalling that in some cases, Storm Shadow was used together with American harm and mild missiles. Harms either destroy Russian defense radars or force them to shut down, and MALDs ensure that all working radars will have signals on their screens and the Russians will not know which ones are Storm Shadows. Both harms and MALDs are made in the US, which is why all eyes are on Washington right now. It is indicated that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is probably hoping for permission to use not only harm and mild, but also the ATA CMS. Recall that The Telegraph previously wrote that the UK supports Ukraine's use of storm shadow missiles against Russia, but will not publicly call for this step due to the concerns that it will provoke a conflict with the US. Politico, citing sources, wrote that the US does not want to give Ukraine permission to strike with its long-range weapons on Russian territory in the hope of resetting its relations with Moscow in the future. The White House and the Pentagon claim that Ukraine has the potential to win without this, the publication's source said. Some in the upper echelons of Biden's national security apparatus believe Kyiv 
may be launching a public campaign to hedge against any potential significant loss of ground in Ukraine in the coming months, according to one person familiar with internal conversations between Washington and Kyiv. Ukrainians say they need more freedom of action and remain optimistic they can achieve it.